Hi there, and welcome to Thrive Yoga and Wellness and Thrive Online. My name is Jennifer, and this is Ruger. He may or may not be joining us. It's raining where we are today, so I can't really put my dog outside, so I think he's going to make a few cameos in today's video on exercises you can actually do in bed, yoga poses you can do in bed. So we often get comments like, oh, yoga's too hard, or... I'm too busy for yoga or anything like that. And so today's video is going to be a super quick hello buddy sequence that you can do right from the comfort of your bed. So let's get going, shall we? I don't have a Pinterest bedroom, so I'm just going to show you these things on my mat, but you can definitely do these from your bed. So I had originally planned on putting my head where Ruger is, but we're going to change that. Let's get started on our backs. This pose is called supine cobbler's pose or supine baddha konasana. What you're going to do is bring the soles of your feet together and let your knees fall apart. Now, if your knees are really up high, that's okay. In fact, if you're in bed, it might be a good idea to grab a pillow to put it underneath your thigh. It'll help you to relax a little bit more. You're going to be laying on your back and you just bring your feet up as close as you can to your groin and you relax here. If you have room, like if your partner's not there with you, you take your arms out wide to a T, and guess what? That becomes a little bit of a stretch, too, across your chest. This is working to open up across your hips. You'll feel this across your chest, maybe even into your shoulders. I also feel this in my inner thighs as well as a little bit into my belly. It feels awesome. Now, you can stay here for several breaths. Remember, you can put your pillows underneath your knees to make it a little more relaxing or if you want to make it open up across your heart a little more you're going to take this pillow and that's what I'm going to do and put it underneath your back so just grab the pillow that maybe was underneath your head or the one that you hug put it underneath your back and then lay out flat like this this makes a super super yummy stretch for you across your chest Maybe you have this handsome dog that is hanging out on top of you to tell you to maybe relax your knees a little bit more, and you just breathe. You can stay here, like I said, for three to five minutes, or you can just kind of like hang out here. I'm not going to lie. This is really comfortable for me, especially if I've got some pillows here underneath my legs. So I have been known to sleep like this. My husband thinks I'm a little bit crazy. I'm not going to lie, but it is very, very, very relaxing. We're going to stay here for just a few more minutes. Now, keep in mind that the closer your heels in towards your groin, the more of a stretch this is, the further away they are, the less of a stretch it is. I find that kind of having them midway where it's not a super big stretch, but it's just a little bit, it's, it's the most relaxing um, most beneficial relaxing when they're further away it's less of it's le I don't feel anything so I'm kind of like ah, I'm trying to do this to wake up or I'm trying to do this to relax at night so I'm gonna get a little bit of a stretch going remembering always to breathe this is called supine baddha konasana or supine cobbler's pose now, if you do stay here for the full five minutes, especially without any blankets or pillows supporting those outer thighs, you might want to use your hands to help pick up your legs because your hips are going to be like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? So from here, what we're going to do, it's my second favorite pose. I do this pose, I'm not kidding you, almost every single day. It's called wind removing pose and it's awesome for helping to build mobility in your hips as well as uh, mobility here along the hip flexors. The longer we sit, you know, if you drive a lot or if you're in the car a lot or anything like that, the longer you sit, the shorter these hip flexors become. And that can help pull your body forward, which puts a whole bunch of pressure here in the low back. So I'm hoping that Ruger will steal my heater and sit there so I can demonstrate this a little bit better for you. So I'm going to demonstrate this with my right knee into my chest first. Here you are laying in bed. Perhaps you just finished with your cobbler's pose out to the side just like that. What you're going to do is extend that left leg out and bring that right knee into your chest. You hold, the, you hold onto the shin just below the knee 
And since we're trying to be a little bit relaxing, since we're trying to be, you know, like calm, we're not going to really pull down on that knee a whole bunch. In a vinyasa class, you might use a little more effort to help get the knee closer to the chest. But since we're here in bed, relaxing, we're just going to hold this posture here very gently into your chest. Now, if you can't get your knees that close, that's okay. Even if you're hanging out and you have to kind of hold behind the knee, like on the hammy, that's okay too. You do you. Trust me, you're going to feel some mobility happening in the hip and you'll feel a nice stretch along the left hip flexor. That brings a really good point up. If your left leg can't extend out straight, like it's kind of dangling out in this space because your hip flexor is really tight, take that same pillow that we just had and put it underneath either your calf or your thigh, whatever you need to do so that your body's not dangling out in space. If you're dangling out in space, then it's going to be really hard for your body to relax. So if it feels nice and supported here in bed, then you are winning. And eventually, you'll get to the point where you don't need that pillow, and you can just lay flat with the knee into the chest. One really cool modification that you can do with this wind-removing pose is take the knee over towards the left, leaving that left leg extended out straight. So this becomes a, sh a twist for you as well. And this is awesome. Super awesome. Because you're supported, and if your knee is hanging out in space, remember to put that pillow under it, you can really get to this nice place where you're building a lot of mobility along the, the low back. I love doing this one when I'm really stiff or really late at night to help me relax. If you can, you'll look in the opposite direction of your knee and just breathe. Now we're going to move to the other side. So to come out of this twist, use your hands to bring that knee back into your chest just for a moment. Maybe see if you need to reset anything. You can do a few circles here in the hip joint just to see what's going on. Checking in there. Extend that right leg out and using your belly muscles, bring that left knee into your chest and squeeze. Now, something that I want to warn you, especially if you aren't doing yoga like every day, you're going to notice a difference between sides. And that's totally normal. You know, you're left, you might be left handed, I'm left handed, or right handed. That definitely plays a part in it. Injuries play a part in things. Um, the weather, like it's rainy where we are today, so that's going to play a part in your mobility. It's cold and, and rainy. It's, it's, I hate cold and rainy days, so it's, it's pretty miserable. So if you notice one side is tighter than the other, that's okay. You just kind of hang out here and breathe and hope that it starts to relax. Over time, it will. While you're here in this posture, if you want to kind of move your, your knee side to side, it's okay. Remember, gentle pressure here, holding that knee into your chest or holding behind the hammy into your chest, depending on how close that thigh can get to your chest. This is just a gentle stretch for that right hip flexor, as well as mobility stretch into that hip joint. Let's hang out here for another few breaths. This pose, oh, I almost forgot. It's called wind removing pose for a reason. So we're compressing on the right hand side, that's the ascending colon. On the left hand side, it's the descending colon. So. If you pass a little gas, you're probably doing it right now. Yes, I just said that on YouTube for the whole world to read to hear. So yeah, remember that these po almost all of yoga helps to aid in digestion in some way, shape or form. And so yeah, if things start to move that this could be a really great reason why. In fact, when my kids are um, having some belly aches or, you know, gassy pain or whatever, this is something that I do with them. Let's take that left leg over towards the right gaze maybe over towards the left take that pillow and support the left knee if it's hanging out in space and you can look towards the right if looking towards the left is too much totally okay whatever is kind of feeling good for you today another thing that you can do for the pillow with the pillow rather is put a pillow here under uh, behind your left shoulder and that actually feels really delightful because sometimes my back kind of feels exposed in these twists. And anytime you feel exposed or vulnerable, 
your body is holding on to something. That's that reptilian brain that's back here that's like thousands of years old, right? Like it's, it's saying fight, 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 or fly, fly, fly. When you feel safe and supported, your body's going to relax so you can get into this twist a little bit deeper. This is a super awesome, yummy twist. And I'm glad we're doing it now because it's going to be followed up by a another super yummy twist here in a few moments. You can hold all of these stretches for three to five minutes, but for the purposes of this video, we're just going to do them for a couple of minutes. So let's go ahead and use your hand to help pull that left knee back into your chest. Maybe give it a squeeze and gently play with that mobility a few circles one direction than the other. It doesn't have to be, you know, big circles or little circles. You're just trying to see what's going on because every time you practice, you're going to notice something a little different. Now what we're going to do is called a supine pigeon pose. So bring both of your feet to the mat. You're going to bend those knees and let's cross the right foot over the left keeping sure that that right foot is nice and flexed. You've made a triangle here in between your right thigh and your left thigh. We're going to take that right hand and put it through that, that little triangle as you lift that left knee and bring both knees towards your chest. Keep that right foot somewhat engaged, especially if your hips are really tight. My hips are really kind of open, so it's, it's not that big of a deal for me, but if your hips are really tight, Flex that right foot to protect the knee. Now, if you can wrap your hand around the left shin, awesome. If you can't, you can also grab that left thigh behind the knee. If you noticed, that right elbow of mine is supporting the right thigh. It's just under the knee, not touching the knee, just under the knee in the kind of meaty part of your thigh. And your left foot's just kind of hanging out. This is awesome. You should feel a really, really, really awesome stretch inside, kind of on the, the right butt cheek. That's called your piriformis muscle, and it's chronically tight on most people, especially if you sit a lot, if you're very active. I mean, it's just a tight muscle. It's just a tight muscle. So you can joke with yourself and, and tell your piriformis not to be such a tight uh, I shouldn't say that because this is a PG-13 video. So, yeah, it's tight. It's all it's, it's like tight on everybody, so go ahead and honor that and just breathe. You can stay here for three to five minutes if you like. This can be rather intense, so it's probably why I'm talking a lot. Just try to breathe. Let's give it two more breaths here. One more breath. Beautiful job. Go ahead and let that left foot come back to the mat. Take the right foot to the mat. Maybe kind of clamshell your knees. Do whatever you need to do to kind of get over that stretch. Then we're going to cross the left foot over the right foot. We're going to put that left hand in the diamond between the thighs. The hands are going to clasp behind the right knee or on top of the right shin. That left elbow, again, is just below the knee, kind of in the meat of the left thigh. And that left foot's kind of flexed, especially if this is really, really, really tight for you. Now, if you can't get your knees down as close as me, that's totally okay. Your knees may be here, your knees may be here. In fact, your foot, your right foot, may never have come up off the, the bed. That's totally okay. You're still getting a nice stretch along the left piriformis. And eventually you'll get to the point where you can hold those, that right knee in towards your chest. To intensify the stretch, you push that left um, thigh away from you just a little bit more. But since we're doing this in bed and we're trying to relax, and we may have our best friend sitting there beside you. Dogs. We love our dogs, don't we? then we're just having a good time here, breathing here. Hey, buddy. I probably shouldn't be encouraging him, should I? If you're a dog mom, then you probably know my, know my pain at the moment. This guy does not like a crate, so Ooh, we live with him. All right, let's do this two more breaths. Remembering yoga, 
in yoga, breath is super important. Yo your breath is your life, right? Well, make yourself at home, buddy. This is called the boxer assist in a supine pigeon pose. We may have to call this, we may have to call this the Ruger assist, where he's helping to push that thigh down a little bit closer. He just juiced it up for me. We're going to go ahead. I'm going to have to release your assist from me, Ruger, and come on out of this pose. Now, do what you need to do to kind of wiggle the hips, get them used to it. And then we're going to bring both knees back into the chest. And this time, we're just going to do a really basic supine twist. With your arms out wide to a T, we're going to let the knees fall heavy over towards the right. Try to keep your left shoulder on the bed. If it's not there, if it comes up, it's okay. If it starts to raise up, remember you can put that pillow there underneath your left shoulder to just help you feel more supported. This is a super great, very, very relaxing twist for your low back. It's honestly all over. You can do some modifications here. You can keep your knees stacked or you can take the top leg and cross it over the bottom leg, similar to what we just did from wind removing pose. Or what you can do, which is my favorite, take the bottom leg, in this case the right leg, and cross it on top of the left. This helps to get it into the hip flexor a little bit more of the left hand side. I love you too, buddy. I love you too, but you really do need to move. So you're going to feel this maybe even up into the psoas, and it feels like basically into your left side, if you uh, the left side of your belly, if you've got that right foot crossed over the left. This is awesome when my hip flexors are really, really tight. Are you going to come up with another assist, buddy? If I'm lucky, he'll sit right beside my hips and he'll help to hold me up, but... He's, he's just going to check me out. This is called the yoga police. All right, two more minutes. Not minutes, breaths. You were probably like, what? All right, from here, remove the pillows if you have them. Uncross the knees if you crossed them. Use your hands maybe to help pull those knees back into your chest. Give them a squeeze. Maybe do some circles, whatever you need to do. And then take those arms wide to a T again and let them fall heavy over towards the left. Again, remember that each side's different and every day is different. So if one side's tighter than the other, which this is typically my tighter side, that's okay. And the beauty of practicing at home is you can spend more time on the tighter side. And that's kind of where some of the yoga therapy happens, where you can kind of make the yoga work for you perfectly and specifically. Now remember, we have some options here with the twist. We can take the top leg and cross it over the bottom leg and deepen the twist this way. Or, and my favorite, you take the bottom leg, cross it over the top leg, and that helps to deepen the twist, get into the psoas a little bit. That's that muscle that connects the, the torso basically to the trunk, the legs. Or, and you can also feel this as a great stretch along that, that hip flexor. Oh, this one is amazing. I love this twisty stretch, especially when I'm really tight in my low back. As with all twists, you can look in the opposite direction of the knees, but if that's too much, you just look straight up or you can look with the knees, yogi's choice. Let's spend a couple of more breaths here. Good job. So uncross the knees if you had them. I'm going to spend a, a breath here just kind of getting used to it because that was a little sore for me. Bring both knees into your chest. I'm going to move my pillow so you can see what we do next. Give them a squeeze. And for our final pose that you can do in bed as you extend those legs out, long in bed. Take your arms and hands in opposite directions of the feet and give yourself a really good long body stretch. Now this pose is something that's typically done 
in a yin class. Man, this is making me sleepy, all these, these stretches. So uh, this is called banana asana. And basically, we're going to make a banana with our body. So I'm going to actually do the left side first, so maybe you can see it a little better. I'm going to take my hands, see if in, seeing if I can keep my, my hands together, and walk them over towards the left just a little bit. I'm going to walk my feet over towards the left, too endeavoring to keep your hips on both hips on the ground and both shoulders on the ground this is a super deep stretch for the outside of your right side body here on the left hand side now ways that you can deepen this is you can put that right leg on top of the left but really only do it if you can keep both bottom both butt cheeks basically on the bed or on the ground <laughs> This is stretching out. I mean, you're going to feel this all over that right side. You'll fin feel it in the intercostal muscles of the right, along the oblique muscles of the right, the low back muscles on the right, all the way down through that IT band. I even feel it down into my ankles. And then as you relax, if you want to play with that leg crossing, you can. And with time, you can. This can be pretty pretty dang intense, as far uh, depending on how far over towards the left or the right that you take your legs and hands so if you're in bed and you're just looking for something gentle just don't walk your hands and feet over so much let's do this a couple more breaths All right, bring those feet, taking them back towards the center. Shimmy your shoulders back towards the center. Maybe shake it out if you need to. And then let's do that on the other side. Walk those feet over towards the right. Walk those hands over towards the right. And if you notice, I'm kind of shimmying my shoulders over towards the right too. And that's only because I have a little bit of openness here in the upper body. If all you're doing is moving your hands over towards the right, that's still winning. Try to keep those feet together if you can. And if you want to cross the left over the right, you can do that too. But endeavor to keep both of your butt cheeks and both of your shoulders on the ground or on the, f the bed. You should feel this into the core, the, that left side all the way down your left leg these intercostal muscles, even into your, your lat muscles, your latissimus dorsi, dorsi and then your tri traps. No, that's not your traps, your triceps. I'm just trying to remember my anatomy here. This is helping to, to lengthen you out. Undo all the gravity if you're doing it late at night on your body, on your bones. It just feels really good. Let's do two more breaths. One more. All right. If you crossed your legs, go ahead and uncross them. Take them back towards the center. Take your hands back towards the center. Maybe you do one more long body stretch. And then if you're going to bed, you should be primed and ready for it, ready to just close your eyes and start counting the sheep. Or if you're doing it first thing in the morning, you should, you should feel pretty good to get ready to go in the morning. So the way that I would say do it is bring your feet into your bed and then turn your knees in whatever direction you're trying to go to get out of bed, use your hands to push you up, and then come to seated. Sometimes after all that stretching, if you just jump up, your body might rebel a little bit. So take your time. Enjoy the sensations of opening that you have just given yourself. And yeah, let me know how you feel after these gentle stretches that you can do in bed at any point in time. You can hold all of these stretches for three to five minutes. These are often found in yin classes if you have a yoga studio near you. It is definitely recommended like 
that you can relax in these poses. So being in bed with the lights a little lower, if you have, you know, essential oils going and the, you know, maybe some soft music playing, it can help to create the environment that you need that your brain can kind of shut off and start stretching to really enjoy these stretches. But if you don't and you just want to practice it here with me, I'm so glad to have you. Again, my name is Jennifer Dixon with Thrive Yoga and Wellness and Thrive Online. And I am so glad that you came to this video. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel where we are putting out lots of videos almost every single day on yoga, philosophy, mythology, all things health and wellness. Thanks again for watching. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.